Here's a new example for the chapter 2.1 homework. Um, I just made it up, it's not from the book directly. Using f of x equals x cubed minus 5x, and given that f prime of x is 3x squared minus 5, write a best local linear approximation of f at x equals 2. So uh, we could graph the function initially, that's not a bad idea. Uh, we could just do algebra to begin with. Uh, when we say a best local linear approximation, we can think of a tangent line formula. So L of x equals f of c plus f prime at c times x minus c. Uh, and what do we need to fill in here? We need to know c. Well, we're focusing at x equals 2, so we'll say c equals 2. Um, f of c would be um, f of 2, which is 2 cubed minus 5 times 2, which turns out to be negative 2. f prime at c is f prime at 2, which is 3 times 2 squared minus 5. Uh, 2 squared is 4. 3 times that is 12 minus 5, which is uh, 7, right? So now I have all the information to fill in here. So I can say L of x equals f of c, which is negative 2, plus f prime of c, which is 7, times x minus c, uh, and c is 2 here. So at that point, I'm done with the algebra for it, and it's time to do the evaluation. So I would load up Desmos, and I have that uh, handy here. Let me do that. Okay, so I've got uh, f entered here, and we'll change it to blue. Um, and I've got c equals 2 set up. And I can say L of x equals, and I'll just type the formula I got my, with my by hand work, negative 2 plus 7 times x minus 2. And we'll plot the point c comma f of c. And let's turn this black and maybe make it thicker. So did I end up with a line that is actually tangent to the function at c equals 2, x equals 2? Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. So then I'll switch back to paper and pencil and uh, write that down. Okay, so my graph looks like this. It's kind of your classic cubic shape. And 2 was about here. And my line came like that. And that was L of x, and this was f of x. Uh, one thing to notice here, I didn't plot the derivative function that I was given, um, because I, here in this problem, I'm never, not really interested in what that function, that derivative function looks like, and it would just kind of get, uh, get me confused with everything else. So usually we either plot the function and a tangent line, or we plot the function and its derivative, but not the tangent line. Uh, plot its the function and its derivative function, but not the tangent line. So at this point, it's looking good. I'll give myself a check mark there, and I'm done with that problem. And now we'll go on to another problem that's like something in the chapter 2.1 homework. Um, so let's say using f of x equals x cubed minus 5x, which just happens to be the same function as up there, um, but not using the formula for f of x, uh, for f prime. Find an approximate tangent line Oops, sorry about that. At x equals 2. Um, so why is it going to be approximate? It's kind of confusing because a tangent line is already an approximation to our curved function. But here, since we're not given a formula for f prime, we're told to ignore the one we had above, we have to use some kind of approximate derivative. So we need to, uh, so our tangent line would usually be this. Uh, I'm going to call our new function s of x. So that would be f of c plus, we'll say, approximate f prime at c times x minus c. So how can I approximate the derivative at c? Well, we could use a difference quotient. 
I could say it's uh, f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h. Um, and just we could just use one particular h value. The textbook recommends 0.1 often. Um, uh, the best value of h to use actually depends on the situation and how fast the function is changing and all kinds of stuff. Um, but let's just use this. It'll be good enough. So I could say my approximate f prime is f of, uh, I'm going to use c equals 2 here, f of 2 plus 0 0.1 minus f of 2 divided by 0 0.1. And now I have two ways I could actually evaluate that. Um, one, I could uh, type into Desmos. I could type f of x equals x cubed minus 5x. And then I could type something like m approx equals f of 2 plus 0.1 minus f of 2 divided by 0 0.1. And that would give me a number, and that would be great. Um, or I could do it by hand, which is not going to be pretty. I would have to do uh, 2.1 cubed minus 5 times 2.1. That's f of 2.1 minus 2 cubed minus 5 times 2 all divided by 0 0.1. But I actually made a mistake there. I have to subtract f of 2, and f of 2 is all of this. So I have to put parentheses like that. So you could that, do that all by hand, uh, and you have to remember to put parentheses around that. Or you could let Desmos do all the plugging in for you. Okay, let's switch to Desmos and give this a try. All right, um, so we're going to say h equals 0 0.1. And then we can say m approx equals uh, f of c plus h minus f of c divided by h. So I get 7.1 there. Or if I had wanted to do it just um, with the numbers I know in my head, like 2 plus 0.1 minus f of 2 divided by 0.1, you get the same thing. And now, either way, I can... Um, I can uh, define my other line. So that was uh, f at 2, which we know is negative 2, plus m approx times x minus 2. And there I'm getting this green line. And would you say over here that the green line and the um, and the black line. The black line is the true tangent line that we did in the previous example problem. The green line is our approximate tangent line. Would you say those are pretty good? Did I do a pretty good job um, coming up with an approximate slope there? Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. Um, uh, here, the black line only touches the blue curve in one spot. The green line, if I get, if I manage to click on that, or I guess here I clicked on the blue, the, the original function. That actually crosses the, um, let's uh, try to zoom this, um, the green line is actually crossing, no, turn off the black, crossing at the point we designed it to cross at, and also at this other point, which is no coincidence at 2.1, which is where we said, hey, let's sample the function there, get its y value, and set up a slope to go through those two points. So it's not a coincidence. And because it touches the graph in two places, uh, that's a secant line, which is why I called it S. You don't have to do that in your homework. Okay, um, so let's switch back to paper and pencil and draw our evaluation. Okay, so we've got the same graph as before. And again, we're focused here at two. And our green line that we drew looked basically like the other one from up here. You can't even tell that it's green here instead of black on the video, but whatever. Um, and we noticed that Desmos had put another point there to show that it's intersecting there as well. 
which is what we designed it to do. So I'd say we're good and you can move on to the next problem.